All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna be covering the section rendering API, as well as the addition of the bundled section rendering to the Cart Ajax API. I discovered these APIs while I was observing and writing notes on the JavaScript code within the Dawn theme. Here in the collection page filters, you'll notice that the filters and the product grid respond asynchronously. And this is happening via the section rendering API. On each filter update, this render page function is run, which fetches an updated version of the main collection product grid section. Here on the cart page, you'll notice that the cart page does something similar, but this time requests the specific section to be re-rendered via the cart Ajax API. This way, you can update the cart on the back end and re-render the user interface via a single API request. Now, if all of that went over your head, don't worry. We're about to break down how these APIs work in this video, and I'll show you how we can render sections asynchronously within Shopify themes. Let's get started. All right, guys, I'm gonna start off this tutorial inside the Shopify official documentation. As you can see here, we've got the page on the section rendering API open. And you can read here that you can use the section rendering API to request the HTML markup for theme sections using an Ajax request. So we can bring in section code asynchronously via JavaScript. Okay, so there's two ways we can do this using the section rendering API. We can use the sections query parameter or when we're loading in a single section, we have the option of using the section underscore ID query parameter. Now we can load in a single section using the sections query parameter as well, but we're gonna get a slightly different result and I will demonstrate that right now. Okay, so I've got my testing shop up here, which is based off of Dawn, but I've made some slight modifications in previous tutorials and from my Patreon community. So excuse me if you see anything that's a little bit unusual in here, it is probably something that I've done in a previous video. All right, so we've got the collection page first I want to look at. We talked about it in the intro that when we, you know, go in here and we use these filters, we get the new product grid loaded asynchronously. Okay, so if I go into here and filter by price, you'll see that we don't even have to refresh the page. We can get the new products in here. And if I hit clear all, that selection is cleared and the product grid updates, okay? How it's doing that is via the sections API or the section rendering API. To prove that, let's go into our dev tools here and go into our network tab. You can look at all requests or filter by fetch slash XHR. And then I'm gonna refresh over here so that everything is clean and the network tab is working. And let's do that again. Let's open up here filter from products that are at least 80 bucks and you can see a network request has come through here if i click on it you can see what we're passing in is the section id that we want to come back as well as some filter options now for these filter options we covered that in the last video so if this is confusing to you go back look at that last video on storefront filtering but in this video the focus is on this section right here okay so We've got the section ID and we're reloading it into the page, okay? So if I clear that, you'll see we make another request to the API and now we don't have any filters with it because this is a clean, clean product grid, no filters, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load in this section via our URL up here. So you can see I'm gonna do section ID equals that. And you can see our whole grid, including the filters has come back from the API. It is broken because there's no CSS being loaded on the page because that gets loaded through theme.liquid. But you can see here that the HTML code at least is coming through, okay? We can also, instead of section ID, do sections to load in the single section. But now we get an object with a key value pair of the ID of the section, followed by in the value field, the HTML of that section, okay? So we get the same thing, but in a different format. All right, so that is proof that we can use the request, but you're obviously 
probably not going to want to put it through in your browser URL. So let's actually open up the console and let's work with this live in our console. But before we do that, I want to take some inspiration from the Dawn theme itself. Let's look at the actual code and the code for the collection filters is aptly in the collection filter form file. So let me just move that and collection filters form.js is where we're going to be looking. As we talked about in previous videos, this is all in web components. I broke this down for my Patreon community recently, went through all the different components within Dawn. And that was number one to help me understand all of the uh, web components in Dawn and how they work, but then also to share that with the, with the Patreon community so we can all kind of better understand what's going on inside of Dawn. But essentially this is the component that handles it, uh, handles the, the filter form. And if we scroll down here, we can see that every time we update these filters, this function is run. And the part of this function that I want to draw your attention to is the URL. Here in the URL, you can see the query parameter for section ID. Okay. So all this is doing is taking the root URL, putting question mark section ID on it equals followed by the section ID and then any additional search parameters. And that is what we created when I showed you it before. Here we go. All right, but we're gonna load this in via JavaScript and then we have the HTML to insert into our DOM, okay? So first of all, I wanna construct the URL and then what I'm gonna do is run something similar to render section from fetch. So as you can see here, we put the URL into a fetch request. And when we get that response text back, we run it through this function here, render product grid, which parses the HTML and then replaces the collection product grid with the new product grid that has been returned from the section API. I know I just rushed through a bunch of code there, but there really is a lot going on here. And the only thing we need to fundamentally understand with section rendering API is grabbing that HTML code and then knowing what to do with it. Okay. So we're going to take inspiration from this function or from this function here, and we're going to do it ourselves. All right. So what I might do is split these up. First of all, I'm going to get that URL that we had before. So let's just say we wanted to get the second page. So hopefully this works. I can just add page equals two to the end. And there you can see the products that showed up are different now. So if I go to page one, you see these products are different. Okay. So let's just say we want to load in asynchronously the second page of results. So I'm going to grab that URL. Let's go back to our page here, making sure not to refresh because we're going to lose this variable if we do. And I'm just going to let the URL equal that second page of results. All right. So now that as we saw before, will get us the second page, but we want to use our JavaScript code here to load that in asynchronously. So what I'm going to do is I know this is going to squish this completely, but I want to get this side by side for you guys. All right. All right. So now we've got the code side by side. I might just put this up a little bit. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to do is take some of this code as inspiration and create our own fetch request to the section rendering API. So I'm going to start with fetch URL and then we can copy this part here. And then inside of here is where we're going to do our work. Okay. So as you can see here, it's taking the response text as HTML, passing it into render product grid. We don't necessarily need to do that. I can just go into here copy this code and instead of storing that in inner HTML, I'm just going to store that as new HTML. And then instead of HTML here, this is going to be response text because remember here we put response text response text into HTML and pass it through. Rather than do that step, we can just 
literally take the response text. All right, so that should be enough, I'm thinking. All right, so let's just open this up. And before we run this, just make sure to keep our eyes on the product grid here. So if I hit enter, we've got an unexpected token. Obviously I've got two dots here in a row, silly me. Let's run that again. And as you can see, something is not working. We haven't got any errors. Okay, so we're getting the response text, passing it through. Ah, I've forgotten one line. That's the problem. Okay, so from our code over here, I forgot the important line, which actually takes that HTML and replaces the current HTML of this element. All right, so I'm going to insert that there and then put equals new HTML. All right. Now I'm going to hit enter unexpected token again. Oh, there we go. I'm going to get that that saved from last time. Now this should work. So if I hit enter, you'll see that the product grid asynchronously switches to the second page. Now, if I go into our URL, as you can see here, and let's say the URL is instead of that, we switch it to URL equals same thing, but instead of page two, page three. So we've changed the URL. I'm struggling to get back that last request. Here we go. And then I run that last request again. You'll see it'll change to the third page now. And it even updates the pagination that's included in the section as well. All right, so that's a little example of how we can use the sections rendering or the section rendering API. Essentially, you can use it however you want, but we just need to grab that HTML and parse it in order to use it. That's the most important concepts here. We're going to grab that HTML so we can easily grab it by just going to the URL you can see here. But once we have that HTML, it's not very useful unless we parse that text put it into somewhere in our DOM, and then we can use our normal JavaScript here. We can find a particular element, take that in a HTML and put our newly returned parsed HTML in there and that'll replace that content, okay? So that's the section rendering API, okay? Now let's have a look at the cart API reference and specifically the part that says bundled section rendering. So if I click on this part, actually before I get into that, you should have a solid understanding of the cart Ajax API before we get into this. So this is just to add to your knowledge of what's going on here. Um, if I go into the Shopify change log, and I look for sections URL. Oops, wrong one. Um, how did I find it before? Bundled section rendering. So it's mentioned twice in this change log. Initially when online store 2.0 was announced, they added something called bundled section rendering and then the update that happened in November 19 is around sections URL. So we'll get to that. I'll come back to that in just a second, but to give you some context here, this is a new thing in online store 2.0. The cart API obviously has been around for a while. So I hope you are across the cart API already. If not, probably go look into that first. But if you're ready to look at how you can add bundled section rendering to what you're already doing with the cart API, just need to click down to here to this area. And as you can see, in terms of how we would usually do it, we'd send this items array, but then we can also send a string of the different sections we want to return with our API request. There's also this sections URL parameter. All right, so the sections URL parameter identifies the section that you're coming from. All right, so that was what Shopify had changed up here in November 19. It said it in the operated in the context of cart when no specific sections URL parameter was set. Now the sections URL isn't set. 
sections are rendered in the context of the current page based on the refer HTTP request header. So the behavior of sections URL remains unchanged, but the default is changed now. It's going to be set to wherever it was loaded from, not necessarily the cart um, context by default. Okay. So again, this sections URL thing is not super important. The important thing is if we go back to here is this part here where we send through the list of sections. And then the other important thing obviously is what we get returned from the API. Now, if we use Dawn as our reference again here, the page I'm looking for is of course the cart page. And as you can see, when I change the quantity here, this whole section reloads asynchronously. I've obviously got some JavaScript consoles over there, but just ignore that. If I go into my network tab, you can see we're triggering the change.js uh, endpoint. So if I hover over it, I think, here we go. Yeah, so it's very small text there, but you can see slash cart slash change. And if I look at the payload, you can see here the usual payload. We need to pass through what line or ID we are changing, what we're changing it to in terms of quantity. But now we're also passing through a list of sections to re-render and then the sections URL, which is basically where is this request coming from. By default, it's slash cart anyway. So you can leave that out if you want, if you're working on the cart page. All right. So if I go into view source here and then copy that, I can copy the exact payload, which I'll do in just a second. Um, but if we go into the code for that, so let's switch over from collection dash filters dash form, and we're looking for cart.js, okay? This one possibly, well, this one and the collections filter form are probably the two most complicated JavaScript files in the Dawn theme. So don't be too disappointed if you, you can't fully understand what's going on here. But again, we're going to talk mainly in the context of these two APIs. So here we have this function that returns a array of all the sections that we need to re-render. I'm not 100% sure why it needs to be in a function and I'm not 100% sure why it needs to pass through these other things as well because when we actually start to use it or when the Shopify actually starts to use it in the Dawn theme, uh, let's just see where that is, get sections to render. You can see that it uses a map function to just get the section anyway. So we're just getting this particular part which just tells us the ID of the section. So the important thing here is that we have those sections ID, but even just looking down here, I can see that we're going to need the, the HTML ID to update those. So I guess that's why it has the ID here as well as the section and the selector, not hundred percent sure, but the point I want to get across in this video specifically is that we at least need an array with all the section IDs, all right? Section IDs in the context of Shopify backend, not HTML IDs. I know that might sound like a <laughs> confusing distinction there, but the HTML ID is what we use to identify it in our DOM. And then the other ID is what we use to identify it in the Shopify backend. All right. I'll stop talking, otherwise I'll just complicate it more. But um, here you can see what we're doing here is we're constructing a body to pass through in this fetch request. The change, cart change URL, this is a dynamic value that basically is just cart slash change. So we don't really need to overthink that there. Fetch config is a global function uh, that will return an object for us. If I am to look that up, for instance, you can see it's in global here and it just returns this object and then the body is what we set here. So this kind of looks complicated, but it's not really. All we need to do is put in the URL or the endpoint as the first argument, and then our config and body for the second argument. Then we're gonna handle the request. And as you can see here, we parse what comes back and then we start to modify the page, okay? So we're not gonna go into detail about how it all works specifically in Dawn, but what I wanna do is recreate this a little bit. So kind of like what we did for the collection page, do that 
for this cart page as well. Okay, so we've got currently the quantity of two. All right, so let's, um, what I might do is I'll look at view source. I'll grab all of this. And as you can see here, the quantity is one. So if I run this or send this to the cart Ajax API, theoretically, it's gonna change my quantity of this line item to one. Okay, so we're gonna head back into the console with that object copied and let's recreate that request. So again, I'm going to squish up here and look at this. And what I'll do is I'll store that. So I'll call that body. Let's do let body just in case we need to change it. And there we go. We've got an object now for the body. Actually, it wants up here, it's stringifying it. So we better do that. So instead of having that, we'll do JSON dot stringify. All right, so now the, whoops, I forgot to put in the actual variable name. We're letting body equal that. And then if I go body, you'll see we have a string that represents that JSON object, okay? So fetch configures a global, so we can easily just call that. And the routes.cart change URL is simply uh, the endpoint that we saw here, which is cart slash change. All right, so if I go back into here, we've got our body variable set, and then I'm going to run fetch. All it is is a string cart. Let's do it. Let's cart change. And then the next argument is we're just going to copy this. And in fact, let's copy all the way down to here. All right, and then we need to close that. All right, and then, so we can actually see the, oops, I've just run that. Actually, because I've just run that, that's going to have changed, oops, sorry, I have shortcuts for um, snapping, but I'm using a smaller frame for this video. Now, because that successfully ran, accidentally, mind you, the uh, change effect is going to have taken place. So if um, I actually get the cart now, that is gonna be inaccurate. So I'll just have to refresh the page. You can see the cart request has gone through, unfortunately. So that means that it is working, but what we, what we need to do is I want to update the UI as well. So let's change this to two because we're now at one, otherwise it's not gonna be a change. And then, and then let's find that previous, let's clear all this, clear. Let's find that previous fetch request we had. Okay, so we've set the body, so that should be good. Now we're getting the parsed state and taking inspiration from our code here. I'll just, I'll just switch back and forth rather than do side by side. This is obviously a little too complicated for this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is let's just console log the parsed state, see what we're working with here. Parsed state. All right, so now I'm gonna hit enter on that. It's going to change the item here to two and we're gonna return the parsed state. So here you can see we've got all the cart information, but we've also got the sections array here or sections object here with all the different sections and their new HTML. Okay, so this gives me a little bit more context here. Again, I'm gonna need to change the body because now we're at, now theoretically we're at two. So I'm going to change this to body equals, you can get a bit tricky in your uh, console, can't it? There we go, I'm gonna update that to three. So now the body is going to update this to three, quantity of three. Now we've got this again, and I'm going to do parsed state dot sections 
dot this one. Not sure if we can do a dot here with dashes. So I'm going to put it in there and then let's console log that. So there you go. This should now, if it's been successful, which I'm sure it has been, if I go into network, as you can see, we're passing in three and then you can see the item count is now three in our passed back cart object. And if I go into the console, you can see that I'm console logging the HTML that should replace what's in here. All right, so the next step is to actually replace this right here with the returned HTML. So again, I'm gonna change body again to four now, otherwise it's not a change. Hit enter. So that's gonna change that variable. And then here, instead of console logging, what we need to do is actually update our UI. So I think what we can do is find the ID of this section, even if it's just rough for the purpose of this video. All right, let's grab this one. Um, actually, we're looking for the one that has the data attribute on it. Here we go, data ID cart items. Okay, here we go. So we're looking at this one. I'm gonna go back into the console here and then I'm gonna do document get element by ID inside of there. I'm going to put main cart items. Then I'm gonna grab the inner HTML of that and set it to that parsed state that we returned from the from the cart API, all right? So fingers crossed this works. If I hit enter now, you'll see, and it's a little bit dodgy because now we've got your cart and continue shopping duplicated. We need to remove that from our requests or from our code as well. But now you can see our page asynchronously updated with the correct quantity now. And if we wanted to verify that quantity, of course, we can either refresh the page. So there you go, you got four, or we could make a request to the cart Ajax API. And that's about it. You can see that it's it's refreshed here. So that's what's happening behind the scenes when you click on this. It's all happening here. You can view it in the network tab. There's a lot that's going on inside of Dawn, but the main point I wanna get across in this video is that we can now re-render sections using the cart Ajax API and this section rendering API. This one actually might have been around for a while and I just did not know about it. I didn't see Shopify use it until now, um, but it's definitely something that is used in the Dawn theme. And then this one uh, is definitely something that has been new to Shopify since Online Store 2.0 came out. You can see it in the change log here when Online Store 2.0 came out. So yeah. Hopefully you guys have learned something new today that you can take into the field and use in a future project. Any questions or concerns, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you wanted to get more support on your Shopify theme development needs, obviously check out shopifythemedeveloper.com. That is my mastermind community for people that are all focused on learning the specific area of Shopify theme development. So definitely check that out if you wanna go deep on this and get support from me and other community members. Until next time guys, happy coding and I'll see you on the next video.